Hello and welcome back to our co-op campaign. Uh, yeah, I was just, um, I guess I'm doing some base stuff before we start, but I can sell a lot of these because they don't actually do anything. So, uh, yeah, it's all those. Uh, and if I can sell just 10 more worth of junk, uh, and by junk I mean extremely valuable stuff that I probably shouldn't sell, then that means that I could get, um, yeah, that would mean I could get off to training school, which is quite important. Yeah, that'd be quite good. Right, um... Now, where to build, where to build. I obviously don't want to build in this block, because that's the satellite uplink block. This could be a power block along here, so what I'm thinking is probably using this top row for all the things that don't have adjacency bonuses, so officer training school, um, the alien containment, and one day the hyperwave relay, I suppose. I mean, space isn't a problem on this one, because we can just excavate more for dirt cheap. So, yeah, I'll just put the, um, the officer training school up here, and problem solved. Right, so we've got that going. And now I've got no money, and I could have bought um, I could have bought uh, an Interceptor, but I chose not to, because I'd rather have officers. Uh, I haven't looked at the barracks, actually. Uh, I said there was, I think uh, Mathmus said there were some promotions that he wanted me to look at. Uh, as for as for his promotions for his character, I, I think I'd actually just like us to level up our own guys, but um, my advice to Mathmo would be, do you want to be an Exalt agent or not? Because if you do, then gunsling it. If you don't, then we'll survive, probably. But there you go. That, that's my thoughts on that one. I'm not going to pick your your stuff though. Um, yeah. So I don't think there's anything else was there. There was I think there was a uh, this gunner as well, who I think needs to be renamed. And I think I would choose to make her flush, but until I actually get a mission where I'm going to um, use her. I'll probably stick with flush. I mean, my my view is always I'd rather much have a perk that helps me now rather than one that theoretically helps me in sort of four or five promotions time. And flush is always going to help you now because um, it kills drones really easily. And right now I don't think the squad has a very good way to kill drones because even rockets aren't reliable at killing drones. They're great at killing drones if your rocketeer can hit drones, but drones are hard to hit. Uh, and for some reason, oh yeah, because we're not at the top. I was going to say, for some reason we've got a rookie at the top of our list, but there you go. Right, so yeah, as usual, um, Mathmo took all the highest ranking soldiers on uh, on, a, on a very low level mission. <laughs> so I want to see what I can do with it now. So let's go. Let's spin the globe. I'd quite like to shoot something down, but we don't have any, any fighters ready. Van Dorn's back. Ah, Van Dorn, he could come in the next mission. Oh, everyone's back, in fact. Oh, there's going to be a council report soon. There's a lab, anyway. The laboratory. Laboratory online. Right, um... What was I thinking? Oh, I was thinking the council report soon, so I need to check if we need to launch any satellites or anything. No, we don't, because we haven't got any satellite links yet. Okay, that's fair enough. That's fine. We'll be, we'll be doing that... Uh, probably, I guess when as soon as this is finished, we want to we want to build a satellite uplink, uh, and probably before that, want to build some satellites with the money that comes in next month. So if we can get uh, at least some satellites in, the trouble is beam lasers are going to hit at the same time. So I think right now we need to start saving our money. So yeah, maybe I should cancel that officer training school. Maybe. Ah well. Oh, thank you very much. Far, Commander. Your recent results were beyond our expectations, and that is not a statement this council makes lightly. We thank you very much. In touch, Commander. I think we probably need another scope as well. Um, let's think. The only thing I'd really want to spend is a squad size upgrade right now, but I don't think I'm going to have the ranks for that yet. Let's have a look. Officer training school. We've got tactical officers, but I don't want that. I want squad size one. Uh, that's a while away yet. Um, that is really the big important thing. That's the only thing that I'd make an exception for saving our money for uh, right now. Perhaps the scout, uh, the scope. Sorry, but the scope is actually a bit cheaper. It's only seventy. Um, I think, considering we're about to come, well, everyone's about to come back off of being injured for the aircraft, so we don't actually need to get another aircraft right now. But that will be a priority at some point. So I think I'm going to buy one satellite. 
Because we're going to need one even if, well, just in case it gets knocked down, basically. Yep, I know. Don't worry about that. We should build additional uplinks as soon as possible to Bradford. New satellite Bradford, I know what I'm doing. This is why I'm the commander and you're Bradford. Because I know that satellites can get knocked down and we might need one. Uh, right, so as soon as that power's done, I want to start building that satellite uplink. Uh, how long does satellites take to make again? 25 days. So, so yeah, probably it looks like, and I believe that the satellite, um, I think the satellite uplinks take less than that. It's like 18 days or something. I think it's actually based on how many engineers we've got, but uh, yeah, so at some point we're going to have to build another satellite. Um, so I'll save the money for that because the money for the next mission will probably, probably pay for that. Then after that we're going to have to save some money to get the uplink, possibly sell some stuff. That uh, that situation it would be worth selling things if, we, if we're if we coming up against uh, how long it takes to build a satellite uplink. So yeah, uh, this is quite a lot of base stuff before we even get to a mission. So we've got a scope now, that's quite nice. Give that a Cepheid. And an abduction. Eight. Oh, I was hoping for a bit more than that. Oh, well. Let's have a look at the panic, actually. What's a panic like? Japan is where we have the alien base, okay. And Brazil has nothing to worry about. But still, an abduction. Right. Uh, oh, I could take math more. How much experience has he got? 704, so he just leveled up because uh, you get to Corporal at 700 XP, so that's very lucky. Um, Van Dorn the Rocketeer, we still need him to start leveling up as well, and he's quite close to level, so we'll take Van Dorn. Uh, this is now this is now April, so I want to take a pretty good team. Like Usually I'm pretty content to take a quite a weak team, but I do want to take one that actually does something. So I'll take Cepheid, I will take... I'll take Marcel Wallace. Marcella Wallace. What does Marcella Wallace look like? Uh, looks like that. But yeah, so I do want to take Marcella Wallace. Um, I don't necessarily want to take all the best of the best, but I do need something a bit more reliable. So this engineer is good. Uh, I'll take one of the specialists, probably this one, and then I'll take a rookie. Okay. I don't think we've got anything that I need to even do that for. Never mind. Right, so now our our star sniper can actually hit things. So that's brilliant. And Marcella Wallace. We're going to be fighting... Hmm, we're going to be fighting floaters, probably. So what deals with that problem? I think this is a case where I want to take a shredder because he's got heat warheads and heat warheads with a shredder will just destroy all drones that come across. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, so I, I actually I'm not usually in favour of giving rocketeers extra rockets really early in the game until they've got sort of the aim to make use out of them, but that might be necessary. Uh, the infantry can keep that. The gunner probably wants to get rid of that laser and give it... Ooh, let's think. Flashbang, uh, smoke grenade, floaters, well actually no, flashbangs are great against sm floaters, and thin men, now that it comes to it. It's more likely you'll see floaters early on than thin men, but, but yeah. And our rookie, uh, we've, well we've got some cover destruction, so I'm happy about that. We do need a shotgun really in this, in this squad, but can't be helped. Maybe I'd rather take a scout. Yeah, maybe I would rather take a scout, because, uh, because floaters are nasty with Overwatch. But then, how many more opportunities am I going to get to take rookies, and we have so many that we need to train up? Hmm. No, I think I do want to take a scout, and I don't really want to mess around. Uh, that scout... That th This would be a terrible scout, though, with 11 mobility. I c really can't take that as a scout. Because that needs to be a sniper, really. Well, I say that, and then it's got terrible aim as well. No, it needs to be a scout, actually. Uh, yeah. This got some health, so at least some health is some useful stuff there. Yeah, so I, as I said, I need to take I need to take a shotgun. Uh, I don't need to take a battle scanner for uh, Seekers yet, but I might be I might be interested in doing that, though. We don't need any more cover destruction, so you can get rid of that. You can take a 
Alright, but I'll scan it then. No, actually, you know, ceramic plating is what I want on the scout. It's so important because, like, if a sectoid hits you for 3 damage, that's fine. You're going to be in the med bay for probably, like, 7 or 8 days. But if a, a sectoid hits you for 3 damage and you're in attack vest or you don't have um, ceramic plating, then you're going to be in there possibly upwards of 20 days, and that's just not acceptable to me. And since the scouts almost are the first people almost always to take damage, then they're the, they're the people who should be wearing the ceramic vest. It does make a difference, and sometimes like a drone will pop you and it won't even break the, the armor and then you're fine. Good to go. Right, this looks like a squad to me. Let's go. Oh yeah, I forgot. I have to promote Van Dorn, don't I? Is it not Van Dorn? Uh, Wallace, sorry. I'm so used to Van Dorn being the gunner. Right, so yeah, I was talking about this. Um, flush is great against drones and seekers, and hollow targeting is better against um, floaters and, and um, cyber discs. Like, cyber discs aren't a problem now for a long time. Floaters are a problem right, right now, probably on this mission. Drones are always going to be there, but there'll be different ways to deal with it. And I'm inclined to think, because we've got a Rocketeer, and I'm going to be cagey with the Rocketeer, that holo targeting is more suitable for this gunner. So this gunner could potentially become a uh, holo targeting Shredder Ammo Mayhem uh, 1. I mean, you want to do that for the ones who are a little bit lower aim, because the Mayhem is the guaranteed damage and suppression hits whether whatever your aim is. But I don't know what... Well, let me in fact just check right now. What is it the gunner's aim like of all of our gunners? Not great, to be honest. Like, these are all pretty low, so any of these would be far better suited to being one of these gunners. So perhaps I should go the flush route. Yeah, I think that probably does make sense. So we'll make Marcella Wallace one of those who uh, is able to... So you become like a, um, a rapid-fire LMG heat ammo uh, cyber disc annihilator and someone who stole those mectoids. They're always good fun. Right, so yeah, that's uh, that's going to be Marcella Wallace's job, and I think that's it. Let's go. Yeah, that was quite a long bit of uh, a bit of intro before we get to a mission there. So, so here we go. <coughs> that's a good map, this one. Help, so that's where we're going next. One of my favorites, this one. Van Dorn, ready for action. And mission. Mission. There we go. Oh, Van Dorn is fit. He's proper bulky. Uh, he's he's no general who sits behind his desk. He gets stuck in, doesn't he? Right. Uh, I think I heard sectoid pitter patter on the left here. Ah. There are versions of this map where you don't get this here. So I might actually take advantage of that. That's really good. Yeah, I think I'm. I think I'd like to. Right. Um. Okay, I'll scout up here. I definitely want the sniper up there. Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> I think Mathmo gave me the. Uh, the Afrikaans uh, voice pack, I think. Was it the Southeast Asian? I don't know. Uh, let's think. Who else needs to be up there then? Probably probably the general, I think. Good old Van Dorn. If he's on that corner, he can shoot rockets right down and, and rain some pain down. Everyone else is happy at being at the bottom. Okay. I don't want to make any decisions yet until I've actually... Oh, it's Thin Men, okay. Doesn't sound like there's any floaters though, so that's interesting. I think I'd probably f rather fight Thin Men than floaters right now. Okay, so what I think I'd like to do then is have my engineer scout for the roof team. That's what I think I would like to do. And look at that convenient spot for the for the infantry to stand in. Come 
So how I imagine this working is that the scout jumps down, offers some shotgun support, um, what the hell was that? and then everyone else just fires from the roof. I think the thin men around here. And there is meld over there, so I may as well wander over in this direction and see what I can find. There's probably something down here. That's that's odd. I don't think I've played this map where there wasn't something in the alleyway. Okay, in that corner. Given the s the prime spots to my my engineer, uh, sorry, my sniper and uh, rocketeer. Oh, here we go. There's something happening. That that padded noise means that there's they're in that that building. And where is this meld? Is it down here? It's in there. Okay. Where's the where's the scout? Off you go, scout. But you're not the scout. Alright, I'm gonna get the scout in a position where he can grab the meld next turn. Let's do this. She can grab the meld next turn. So she can bust through that door and then leg it, essentially. Uh how do I wanna play this? I think Van Dorn wants to stand there. Moving out. Infantry's there. And they all steady their weapons. So that what'll happen is I'll 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 draw contact there and then I'll run out and then everybody on this roof can support anything that comes out that door. Support killing anything that comes out that door, I should say. So right now I wanna move here, check there's nothing just around this corner and some sort of weird bizarro world. And then get my engineer in, in position ready to go. This may not look like it makes any sense, but in my head it does. I've got a plan. What I'm doing is concentrating all firepower on this doorway. Concentrate all firepower on this door. Yeah, they're in there. Right, so as soon as I go in here, they'll uh they'll reveal. But you gotta get the meld. You gotta get that meld. Oh, that's a great position for cover, mind. Oh, there's another one there, look. That's fantastic. It's definitely the direct, uh, the correct decision. Oh, Seekers. Didn't I just say I wasn't going to fight any Seekers? And then, what do you know, there's some Seekers. Oh, you know what it is, actually? I could kill this guy, no problem, with this engineer. Just one rocket there, solve all my problems. I'd be concerned about breaking through into this wall, but... Then my, my gunner could just jump down and finish the job, really. Right. There's a there's a bit of a crossroads I'm at here. I've got the choice of taking this shot. It could kill. It's probably quite likely. It's like 66% chance of a guaranteed kill and then whatever added on for a non-crit that does still kill. They shouldn't have massive damage resistance since this is literally the first one I've seen in the campaign. Uh, and if I move... Yeah, let, let's move the gunner down here. I still want to call the gunner Van Dorn because I always make Van Dorn my gunners. And there's the other one is there. The flush is no good without the heat yet. But what I can do is throw a grenade in there. One grenade for uh, the most dangerous thin man. Oh, I should have I should have moved to the I should have have trying to cheat there. What I was trying to do is move to there and then uh, I was trying to avoid moving there keep out a line of fire at the Seekers, but it seems like I've made a mistake, really. I can't, yeah, okay, you can still get that. That's fine. Oh, no, 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 Why? Why? Oh. God damn it. Well, it still destroys cover. Right, we're in somewhat more of um, an emergency situation than I was anticipating because that grenade <laughs> decided to flick up onto the roof at the last second when I pressed it. But uh, that's XCOM. Kill this thing. Surprise! Oh, maybe I've even... Have I... No, I was going to say, have I, have I given my guys some line of sight there? I don't think I have. Right, well, well we've committed somewhat. <laughs> we've somewhat committed. Thank you very much. Ew, look at that. Three damage resistance. That's pretty ugly. Alright, well, there's not much point messing around with cover right now. Right, well, I'm going to take the shot with the um, the infantry first because 
there's a chance that the infantry should, could just, you know, do all the damage needed and just kill it. Yeah. No longer a threat. And if not, then I was going to throw the grenade, but it's fine. Panic over, guys. Sefi, stay on the roof. Get those good shots. Oh, I think there were some something in this laundry. Maybe. Something jogging about. It might be in here, actually. Get that meld. I think we've got another turn on that. Now, where do we want to go? I don't think there's anything over there. And I think they're in here, so I want to prep uh, like a breach, I guess. I'm fairly happy keeping Cepheid where he is. Oh, that was meant to be a steady. Whoops. That meld's got probably two turns left on it, I think. Got to get the meld. I'm concerned that I might, I might reveal a pod over here, but... That would be quite unlucky. Someone has been through that door, mind. How much meld was that? 12. Yeah, like 24 meld in this mission. Just because I was a bit reckless, eh? I have to say, it is relaxing to play Brutal. Like, <laughs> it, you just... Just that slight bit less you get punished for your mistakes is just... It's just so much more comfortable. Like, having played Impossible consistently for... years now. <laughs> I do play normal campaigns, but I, it's almost like a different game, really. Alright, Sefi, you're probably not going to be much use there. Having you on this crate might be useful. On my way. I would have liked to have... Well, I've got time. I need to get the, uh, the scout back. I was thinking I would have liked to have gotten some steady weapons on the go, but the scout's not nowhere near ready for a breach, so... What I could do, actually, is have the scout walk around here and reveal through this. Yeah, that's a better idea, actually. I think I'll do that. Through the doorway. Where are they? I have a feeling that it's only sectoids left on this map now. Heading out. Right. Let's prep our steadies. I'd like the sniper to stand there. No, actually no, I'd like the infantry there. I'd like the I'm on the move. I'd like the sniper standing here because the sniper could then shoot through this doorway in this direction which is where I most likely see contact and also through this doorway if need be. The gunner though, that's not really helping anyone where he's standing there. And when you're door breaching, there's never if you can steady weapon rather than overwatch there is never reason not to, to do that unless you're expecting them to run through the door next turn. Because steady weapon will always have an effect on next turn, on your decisions next turn, but um, Overwatch may not because it might wear out because nothing triggers it. Okay, nothing there. I did mean to trigger with this scout, I'm just being inconsistent with my own words. Okay, that's so far okay. Uh, I wanted to put the sniper in a good spot. Uh, that's not really a good spot. That's a... No, that's a good spot. What? Are you joking me? We opened that door and you couldn't see them. Come on. Right, well, it's alright. We've got an engineer. He'll just solve our problem for us, I think. No mercy, engineer. Sneaky bloody sectoids. Might even just kill two of them, I think. Wow, yeah, just like wrecked one of them completely. Right, kill that guy. Oh, he's still got bloody cover. Need, need, um, what's it called? It, sapper. I don't want to throw a rocket here, but, but it's reliable, you know? <laughs> well, Flush might see some use here. Oh, now I can throw a rocket, actually. Go on, go on, get closer so I can throw a rocket. No, actually, it's still worth throwing a rocket. Is it? That's going to scatter so much. If I put it in the middle of them, it might hit something. Yeah, let's see that. Go Come on, Van Dorn. Just don't hit this. Please, just don't hit this, Van Dorn, please. Thank you. Oh, very nice, Van Dorn. Two sectoids and killed the guy's cover of the other one. 
Right, this guy's going to be an easy kill because the infantry can... No, the infantry can't see him, actually. That's annoying. The infantry can move and then see him. And then I think this guy's going to be an easy kill because I can flush him. Right. Oh, this all seems to be working out. Okay. Can the infantry see him from there? That is something I'd like to know before I move. I could just take two shots at this guy. and Or one shot and overwatch. That might work because this guy's going to move. That's probably the better option. Yeah, nice shot. You gotta, you gotta sometimes play for the optimal outcome rather than the safe one. Um, this guy's more dangerous because he's right there, but but he's more likely to get hit by the Overwatch. So what I'm gonna do is play for the optimal outcome again because Marcella Wallace has a lot of health, so I'm not too worried about her. And this guy, he's gonna run away, so he's gonna be. I don't want to have to deal with chasing him down. Right. Get the scouting close just in case. He could probably move to this bookshelf, but as I said, the, the Overwatch might get him. Yeah, so you play for the optimal outcome and nothing bad happens. Sometimes it's good to do that, and it's a lot safer to do that with sectoids than it is with, say, mutons. But, yeah. You can afford to do that in the early game a bit more. Play for the optimal outcome. And it's, it's quite important to do that sometimes as well, because the... Um, you get more experience for completing a mission with no casualties. So if you get the optimal outcome that avoids taking any damage, then that's great. You're you're giving yourself you've gambled and you've gotten extra bonus experience on your soldiers, which is great. So yeah, it's possible that these guys, some of these guys, might not have been promoted if I hadn't done that. So so yeah. Now with Van Dorn, uh, his aim isn't isn't like incredible. I've seen Rocketeers get to this point and be like 85 aim and in that case you want to take snapshot uh, probably because firing the hole doesn't even help like those Rocketeers. They they cap out on aim and they don't need to worry about it anymore but uh, 74 is about probably where I'd expect uh, most Rocketeers to be so firing the hole is still good for them. Snapshot <coughs> it's uh, it's a really it's a lifestyle choice snapshot versus firing the hole. Uh, I prefer firing the hole um, just because those reliable rockets are just so good but snapshot can bail you out of situations I am aware of that and I'll leave that till the next mission to decide what I want to do with that and let's have a look our engineer right we've got one smoke so I think we should go with one sapper that makes sense to me uh, and our infantry mm, she's not bad aim actually uh, I'm quite happy to make another opportunist overwatch infantry they're just very good and yeah, the Van Dorn, you can uh, save his promotional to later. 24 meld. <coughs> Yummy meld. Mmm, meld. Remember right, I will spin the globe until uh, Mathmo gets a mission then. So what, what... I did just talk at the start of this mission what I wanted to do. I wanted to buy a satellite opening, don't I? So when I've got them... Oh, I actually want to buy a satellite, in fact, is what I want to buy. And then we'll... The next mission will pay for the satellite uplink. Our current satellite uplink okay. facilities are at full capacity. We should so, additional uplinks as soon as possible to allow for new satellite deployments. Uh, for Mathmo's benefit, we want to build um, a satellite uplink after this thermal generator is finished and before 20... well, how long does it take? I think it's 21 days from memory. So you probably want to build this when the council report has 23 days left on it. So if you... If, uh, if if we can't build that satellite uplink before we get it started, before sort of 23 days, then we're going to kind of probably struggle, I think. But uh, that that's fine. So the next priority really is to save all the money, sell all the things, uh, even flight computers, probably even meld if we have to, just to get that satellite up there because that money will be so valuable at the start of um, May. So yeah. That's uh, that's all I have to say on that one, really. In fact, I will spin the globe a bit actually, and just uh, and see what happens because Mathmo gets a gets a mission coming up. So let's see. I really need something to happen before 23 days. Come on, something needs to happen. Maybe I need to cancel something. Did I build another scope? No, I, I sh maybe should have cancelled that, but eh, whatever. Come on, come on. Thermal generator is done. All right, that's good. I will actually just pause the video at this point just to check how long it takes to build um, a satellite uplink. Yeah, I was right. It is 21 days, so uh, 
if we get past 22 days on this ticker, then I might have to try and quick build it, and that will give us until 11 days, and it'll cost 20 meld. But to be honest, that's worth it for all that money, and that money sort of stacks up over time. So, yeah, something please happen on the 23rd day. Yeah, thank you. Okay, that's good. That's very very good. <laughs> We need a mission here, is what we need. I'd rather not just get the... We definitely need to shoot it down. Come on. Yep, that's so far so good. Okay, you're having a terrible time there. Okay. And... Q-tip. Reliable Q-tip. Come on, knock this one down. Okay. Do it. Oh, the aliens are on fire at the minute. Wow. Right. Uh, so yeah, that should be enough, really. Enough to uh, build the uplink. How much? How much do I need? Two hundred. Okay. So I need to find sixty somewhere. Right. The flight computer. That's thirty already because we're not going to need that for a while. Uh, I really don't want to sell meld, but I will if I have to. Uh, Seeker Rex. I'm not going to use them for a while. They can go. Everything must go. Alloys. I cannot sell alloys because we're about to build beam weapons. And I can't sell weapon fragments either. Drone wrecks, they're not that much use. There's another 10. Uh, the sectoid corpses are actually really good, but we haven't researched um, xenobiology yet. So we're not getting any new requests on that. <laughs> I, I don't know actually, why didn't we research xenobiology? I guess, oh, I don't know, I wasn't in charge when we started, whatever. But yeah, that's the next thing, after beam lasers we should instantly get that, I think. Um, what else was I going to say? Uh, Actually, maybe the benefit of getting Xenobiology is gone now. <laughs> but anyway, get rid of Thin Men. Don't need them yet. Uh, this is more important than that. Illyrium. Uh, it hurts to sell it, but there it is. Right, Satellite Uplink. Oh, that makes me feel better now. Right, so that Satellite Uplink will finish just before the Cancer Report. Just at the end of the month, we'll be able to put two Satellites up. And yeah, we'll be able to complete some requests. Uh, we might get some requests by the end of the month and then we can start filling up the United States and then we'll get the air and space bonus. I can't remember, do you get the air and space bonus? Still like, I seem to remember that you, they decided to take it away but I honestly can't remember. Yeah, I think you don't get the air and space until you do the whole continent. I think it's called something else now as well. Whatever. Oh, changes, eh? Don't like change. No, I actually love change. Right, so that's, uh, well, no, it's not that mission. I still need to scan to get the next one for him. Okay. I was nearly gonna. I was nearly gonna call the end there. Right there we go. It's a heavy abduction in in Argentina. So they they're having a lot of fun with South America at the minute. So yeah, that's fine. We can probably expand into South America after that. Right. So anyway, uh, that would be the end of this mission. Right. So uh, I will see you guys for the next one.